Today we're just going to read eight, verse 8. So we're Zechariah 3, verse 8. Listen up. Hear, O Joshua, the high priest, you and your companions who sit before you, for they are a wondrous sign. For behold, I am bringing forth my servant, the branch. So before we talk about the, uh, the branch, let's talk about this first part, about the, the human people here. It says that Yeshua, Joshua, and his, his, those who gather with him, they're going to be kind of like a special sign. They are an unusual wonder or a sign. And that's very interesting because usually when we look out at the world around us, each generation, you look back and you, it feels like, it seems like each generation is, is, they're all going down, you know, further each with each generation, going down to another level down. And if we look more closely, we'll often find that it might not be the biggest group, it might not be the flashiest group. The people in the front might be, you know, right at the front edge of demoralizing trends, yes. But if we keep our eyes peeled, we'll often find that, that God does have a group of people. A lot of times it's younger people, people who are serious, people who are not following the trends of decay. They're, they're usually quiet, they're there maybe in the background. They really want to follow Jesus. And so we've got a group of people who are on God's team. Watch out for those people. Don't lose heart. God will always raise up. He keeps raising up a remnant. And, and in your day and mine, don't think there's not a group of people who are seeking to stand up and be true to all that God reveals. God's people will be wonders. And that's a pretty beautiful thought. The Israelites of the Restoration were to be a demonstration of what God can do with those who will simply give themselves to him. And so... Zechariah and Yeshua and the, the group of people gathered around them, that that's how the rest, restoration began. You know, God found some people who were interested in spiritual things. And, and so he's working with them. There's something kind of toxic or even dead in a lot of our theology. If we think that, that humans have no part, you know, it's all about Jesus. Well, okay, it is all about Jesus, but what does Jesus do? We see that in the people. You know, it says in the book of Acts, you know, there was a group of people that had met with Jesus. Said they, then they knew that they'd been with Jesus. That's what we all need to be. That's what I want to be. That's what I aspire and long to be is somebody who, who you can tell they've been with Jesus. I'm not sure that's so evident, but we all need to be, to be that kind of a person. And God is watching for and giving us the opportunity, privileges, special privileges, to be those kind of people, people who've been with Jesus. I know many people are gonna run away from righteousness. Well, okay, then the kingdom's not for them, but let's, let's try to bring it to them. Maybe some will turn and come in the right direction. So who is this branch that's being talked about? Who is that? Well, ultimately, of course, that refers to Jesus. Even in Isaiah 52, he's like, he's referred to as the branch. It really means like a sprout here. And in Isaiah 52, it talks about Jesus as a, like a person who's like a root out of dry ground. When we see him, we don't think, you know, oh, automatic uh, Hollywood handsomeness. The people saw Jesus and many people had heard about him and they, they were really impressed by what they heard. And then when they saw him in the flesh, so to speak, they, they said, what, you know, this guy? He, he looked kind of like, I, if we take it, he looked like sort of an average person. And yet he was God's servant for the hour. So we'll find out a lot more about the branch, how that refers in, in chapter six, just a couple chapters on here, we're coming to it. The branch is, is ultimately Jesus, but it also refers to those who are part of his, his kingdom. You know, the New Testament talks about Jesus, he's the head of the church. And of course, then that means makes all the members of the body. We're all part of the same group and Jesus is our leader. And so the branch in a sense sort of includes us. I mean, we don't make atonement, we don't die on the cross for ourselves. Our righteousness is, is not righteousness, okay, right? We're, we're all there on the same page. We still are included. Romans 6 tells us we are baptized with him. We are buried with him by baptism into his death. And we rise in newness of life with him as he is, uh, resurrects. Whatever God is trying to do, we want to be part of it. We want to be part of the program. Christians should be a demonstration of the gospel. And so we want to find out what it is that he's doing. Rever Reformation and revival usually begins small, begins with two or three people. Mm -hmm.